Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you briefly about what the autonomic nervous system actually is and show you where it fits within the hierarchy of the nervous system itself. Now the first thing we need to talk about is the nervous system and we know that it is a system of communication. Information can be sent from our body to the central nervous system which is the brain, brain stem and spinal cord for it to make sense of it. It can decide what it wants to do with it and then send information back out to the body. Which means we can subdivide that nervous system straight away into two divisions. The first division we can talk about being the central nervous system. I'm just going to write it up here as CNS. The second division we can call the peripheral nervous system. I'm going to call it the PNS and we'll talk about that in a second. Now the central nervous system is made up of the brain, like I said earlier, brain, brain stem, and spinal cord. And it's called the central nervous system because it sits centrally within the body, brain, brainstem, spinal cord, but also is central functionally. This is the site of integration. So any information coming from the peripheral nervous system to the central, this is where we integrate it and make sense and make a decision. Any information coming back out and away to the peripheral nervous system has all come from the central nervous system. All right. Now the peripheral nervous system, like I just said, this is going to be information going into the central nervous system or information going back out and away. This is made up of, so while the central nervous system is brain, brain stem and spinal cord, you could say that the peripheral nervous system is made up of 12 pairs of cranial nerves. So these are 12 pairs of nerves that shoot out and away from the brain and brain stem, but also made up of the spinal nerves as well. These are nerves that shoot out and away and come back in to the spinal cord. All right, so any signal that's going, so let's talk about the, the peripheral nervous system, right? Any signal that is coming into the brain, brain stem, and spinal cord, or the central nervous system, we call sensory. Any information that's going out and away from the central nervous system, we call motor. All right, that's the first step. So these are two subdivisions of the peripheral nervous system. Sensory going in, motor going out. Now when we look at the sensory divisions, it's coming from the body, going to the central nervous system, what are we talking about here? Coming from the body. Well, there's two divisions here. You've got what we call a somatic division, which is just the body generally. So all sensory information coming from the body. And the other division is visceral. Now visceral means organs. So this is all sensory information coming from Organs. Now think about this. Organs can include any organs within the body. So this could be the stomach or the spleen or whatever it may be, right? And this could be information talking about stretch or pressure or pain, right? This information will go in by the visceral component of the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system to the central nervous system. Or if it's coming from the body more generally, again, the somatic division of the sensory component of the peripheral nervous system going to the central nervous system. When we look at motor, this is all information coming back out. And when we think motor, we always think movement. And that's fair because motor division is the movement division, but it also includes glands as well. So glands release chemicals or hormones, all right? That can tell the body to do particular things. So when we look at the motor, it has the exact same subdivisions, right? So you can say there's the somatic division and the somatic division again is referring to the body generally. This is often referring to skeletal muscle. Remember there's three different types of muscle. Skeletal muscle, which is conscious control. When you look at me writing on the whiteboard, that's skeletal muscle moving, all right? So most of this somatic motor division is skeletal muscle. But the other division is visceral. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, visceral means organs. Organs don't really move. What are you referring to here? Well. 
This includes predominantly the following. When we look at the visceral component of the motor system, we are referring to smooth muscle, we are referring to cardiac muscle, and we're referring to glands. Now, smooth muscle is muscle that lines our hollow organs, like our intestines, for example. It could also include our urinary tract, our reproductive tract, our blood vessels. All of these are lined with smooth muscle. And as you're aware, you don't consciously control that. Keep that in mind for a second. Cardiac muscle, the heart, you don't consciously control that telling it to contract. Glands, these are going to be tissues of the body that release chemicals or hormones. You don't consciously control that to do that particular function. None of these. So all of these happen automatically. But we say the word, or, remember, autonomic or autonomously. So the visceral division of the motor division of the peripheral nervous system is the autonomic division. And the autonomic division is broken up into two particular subclasses. The visceral, also known as the autonomic division, can be broken up into the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. Now when we look at this, sympathetic division and parasympathetic division, we already know that they control smooth muscle, cardiac muscle and glands. Now, why do we have two divisions? Because they're the flip side of a coin. They tell them to do pretty much opposing functions. So for example, the sympathetic nervous system gets activated in times of fight or flight. So pretty much stress. That's how I like to think about it. It's the stress system. The parasympathetic nervous system gets activated when we're resting or digesting. So I like to think of this as the relaxation system. Now, stress and relaxation are the opposite of each other. And basically these two are as well. They innovate, remember, they're going out and away from the central nervous system. So they innovate muscles and glands. And they tell them to do things depending on whether you're in a stress situation or a relaxation situation. Same muscles, same glands, all right? So think about it in this way. I'm stressed. Someone's running at me with a knife, for example. What happens? My heart rate increases. Heart rate, cardiac muscle. My airways open up. Relaxation of the bronchioles in my airways. Smooth muscle. Air can come in. Why do I want these things to happen? So more oxygen can be delivered and blood delivered around the body for me to be able to fight and run away. It's so I can maintain survival in this situation. When we have parasympathetic division, when I'm eating a meal, for example, and relaxing, I need to activate the smooth muscle of my gastrointestinal tract, move the food through, smooth muscle. I need to slow my heart down, it doesn't need to be speeding up as fast, cardiac muscle. I need to tell glands to release certain chemicals or hormones, like digestive hormones, in order for me to help digest and move these nutrients around the body. So, we've got the autonomic division of the Peripheral nervous system is made up of the sympathetic fight or flight and parasympathetic rest and digest. They are the visceral division of the motor division of the peripheral nervous system. They're sending information from the central nervous system out to smooth muscle, cardiac muscle and glands to tell it to be activated in times of stress or times of relaxation. This is a quick run through of what the autonomic nervous system is.